It was a disastrous weekend for the Atlanta Braves in Toronto. We'll discuss everything that went wrong there and also catch you up on the minor league update this week where A.J. smith Shaver was dominant down for Mississippi. All that on today's episode of Locked On Braves. So let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to Lockdown Braves, part of Lockdown Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Amastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. Also, make sure you check out the podcast on Twitter at Lockdown underscore Braves. Send in any questions, comments, or feedback that you have for the podcast. Also, if you're new on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up button as well to help support the show. And thanks, as always, for making Lockdown Braves your first listen of each and every day. And appreciate all of my everydayers out there who continue to let me know in the YouTube comment section as well. I hope you all had a great Mother's Day weekend. Hopefully you got away from the Atlanta Braves for the weekend and enjoyed some time with your mothers or uh, the mother of your children, or if you are a mother yourself. Hope you all had a great weekend. I certainly did, and it kept definitely helped keep me distracted from what was an ugly weekend for the Atlanta Braves overall. Just terrible baseball pretty much all around. We'll discuss that, what went wrong, the the bad, and a little bit of good mixed in there as well. Then I'll give you my weekly minor league update as well. Everything happening down on the farm. A couple of big performances from some top prospects that we'll discuss and then set you up for Monday's game where the Atlanta Braves hope to end a four-game losing streak. Well, let's start with that ugly weekend up in Toronto. The Braves get swept. As I mentioned, they have now lost four in a row and really just a frustrating weekend. They had a chance in all three games. All three games were really tight, but just couldn't get those big hits, couldn't make make those big plays to come away with the win and just honestly got outplayed by the Toronto Blue Jays. I mean, they looked like the better team. On this weekend, the Braves just did not play their brand of baseball that they're capable of playing. And it was just completely ugly, starting with Friday night where Chris Bassett, and why Chris Bassett, of all people, threw a two-hit shutout against the Atlanta Braves. Just two hits on Friday night, a complete game shutout. Again, Chris Bassett. I don't know why the guy just bothers me a little bit, but uh, he was brilliant on Friday night. You got to tip your cap. He kept the Braves hitters off balance all night long, and they could not get anything going against him, except they had two golden opportunities in the fifth and sixth innings and gave it away. Bad base running in the fifth inning by Eddie Rosario cost them from potentially having a big inning and maybe knocking Chris Bassett out of that game even because he had started to lose it a little bit in that inning. And then the sixth inning, Acuna and Olsen get on to begin the inning, and Austin Riley does what he does best this year so far, and that's ground into a double play. So uh, just really rough night on Friday all around, especially offensively, just could not get anything going against Bassett. And the couple of times they did have opportunities, they threw them away. Uh, so <clears throat> a frustrating night. And that continued on Saturday as well. Over nine with the runners in scoring position on Saturday and really all weekend, just really struggling to hit with runners in scoring position. If you know, you watch the first six innings of that game. It felt like the Braves had 20 runs because they had that many opportunities and it just could not get that big hit to really break things open and came back to hurt them uh, because they <coughs> excuse me, couldn't score early and they couldn't score late. And the, the Blue Jays ended up getting uh, the win on Saturday as well as the bullpen let in a couple of runs late as well. So just really frustrating offensively all weekend long from the Atlanta Braves, just not able to have that big inning. It's like they just kept waiting on that home run. And we've talked about that a lot this year, really in the past several years with this offense is if they're not getting that two, three run homer, how do they get runs? How do they score? And they struggle to do that. And that was on full display this past weekend, not able to come up with those big hits with runners in scoring position. You know, they did get some home runs in this series, but just couldn't come through with that big hit with runners on base. And it was like that all weekend long, just highly frustrating to watch. Again, uh, spending a lot of time with family as as we should on that week on this past weekend, but 
Uh, so I didn't have to, to watch it too much, mainly just listening on radio, but still just so frustrating for this team to not be playing up to their potential going up against really good teams. And you know how injury riddled they are. And I don't think injuries played a big role in this weekend. As far as the starting pitching is concerned, they just couldn't get it done for whatever reason, just was not their weekend. They couldn't come through with those big hits. And then the bullpen decision and the bullpen in general just wasn't great. And, you know, I, I know I've defended this bullpen a lot, this year and i think rightfully so but you know even i have to admit they're not coming through right now when you need them to they're not coming through in the most important parts of the ball game now overall you look at the numbers and it's still a pretty good bullpen but just not getting it done in the biggest moments but i go back to the friday game and it's a one nothing game and you take out spencer strider for danny young that to me is a direct result of being short in the rotation and using these bullpen games. And that's why I think these bullpen games have to stop. And it's not like the Braves have pitching has been bad in those games. The bullpen in both of those bullpen games has kept them in the game and given the Braves an opportunity to win. But Brian Snickers trying to, to manage with these bullpen games is mine. He's trying not to use his best arms in these other games in case he has to use them for a bullpen game. And that's, you know, that's giving, you know, Brian Snicker, you know, an even tougher job than it has to be when he's having to think, okay, am I going to have a bullpen game on Sunday? Okay, well, I can't use Dylan Lee in this situation because I might have to use him in that bullpen game, or I can't use Colin McHugh in this situation because I might need to use him in that bullpen game. You can't keep doing that to Brian Snicker, just bring up these young guys. I'd rather see them struggle through four or five innings than have to see Snicker manage the bullpen the way that he has these past week or so with the short rotation, not knowing what to do with the bullpen game because not knowing whether he's going to have to use these guys in a bullpen game or not. So uh, that was one of my you know takeaways from the weekend as well. And then these guys just didn't get it done when they needed to, you know, whether it was Minter on Saturday you know, which again, I've defended Mentor a lot this year, and it just it doesn't make sense. But an 805 ERA and five losses, there's no getting around that. That's hard to avoid. He he has not been getting the job done. I need to do a deep dive in to see what you know what's going on with AJ Mentor because again, you look at the analytics, you look at the stuff, and it just doesn't make sense. This is the same AJ Mentor that was one of the best relievers in all of baseball last year i don't know if it's a missing location i'm not sure you got suggestions let me know in the comment section but until i go in and do a deep dive myself i honestly don't know what is causing aj mentor so many issues i have you know said on the last podcast i think he's been over overused early on in the season i think a lot of that's due to the injuries that they had and i think perhaps it's time to give him a break you know maybe he needs to go on the il for 15 days just to clear his head and come back but Again, I need to I need to dive into the numbers a little bit more and see what's going on with AJ Minter, why he's been so bad. Because again, you look at his baseball savant page, it's all in the red. You look at his stuff, it's just as good as it was last year, but not getting the same results. I don't know if he needs to start it throwing in another pitch, if hitters have just made the adjustments to him. Uh, but something's got to change, that's for sure, because he has not been good. Uh, he's not getting the results that we're accustomed to him seeing. And then Rysel Iglesias blowing a save on Sunday. And again, as bad as the weekend was, you come out with a win on Sunday on the road in Toronto against a really good team, and it makes that weekend feel so much better. Even as ugly as the game was on Sunday, you win that game any way you can, and it makes you feel that much better about the weekend. And Iglesias comes in in a one-run game and with two outs gives up a game-winning hit to a guy hitting under 200. That's just it cannot happen, and it was just that type of weekend for the Braves and the bullpen in general, like I said, from the decisions that Snicker is somewhat forced to make because of the short rotation they have right now and then guys just not getting it done when they need to. But for me, one of the – you know, when I watch the game of baseball, and I love the game of baseball, and I love watching it at the highest level in Major League Baseball because I want to see well-played baseball. I, I didn't see that from the Raves this weekend. It's just bad baseball all around. I mean, I went to one of my nephew's games over the weekend and you could clearly see 
a big difference defensively between my nephew's team, unfortunately, and the team that they were playing. It was clear that the other team was that much better. And when you watch this the series this weekend in Toronto, it was clear the Blue Jays were that much better. They made all the defensive plays that they needed to make several diving catches in the outfield to prevent the Braves from scoring runs, several great defensive plays. And the Blue Jays even made some miscues. Surprisingly, Matt Chapman made some errors in this series. But you saw the Blue Jays, you know, take the extra bag, do the do the small things to help you win games. I saw none of that from the Braves in this series. I, I didn't see them making those great defensive plays and clutch spots when they needed to. I didn't see them taking that extra base to try to push something on and to make something happen offensively. I just didn't see that from this Braves team this weekend. And I'm not saying they aren't a good team and they won't be. It's just this weekend in particular, when you watched it, it was clear the Blue Jays were the better team. They were making those plays that the Braves weren't and it's just really frustrating i mean you look at just the errors and, and i'm really talking about beyond the errors they just d- did not play the game at a high level like ron washington talks about them playing that the braves are, are going to be prepared they're going to play the game the right way well they didn't this past weekend and it's a big reason why they they got swept in toronto the error by ozzy on sunday leads to three runs i mean that's the ball game right there that's a huge difference and not only that in a game where you're trying to get as much length as you can out of your bullpen you're making these errors and it's causing your pitchers to throw more pitches it's just all of that adds up and then i I know brandon belt's a 40 percent pull hitter but the guy went the other way the entire series and then in the ninth inning on sunday you're still shifting on him and what should have been a, a routine ground out to shortstop it extends the inning because you have this guy shifted who's done nothing but go the other way all weekend. It's just little things like that. And even a play in RC has been great defensively. I know that, but this weekend in particular, he just made a couple of plays that weren't smart. And I think of a play, I believe it was on Saturday, Matt Ch- Chapman hits the ball deep in the hole at the shortstop. I mean, RC is five feet into the grass behind third base and he tries to throw out Matt Chapman and it allows Vlad Guerrero to take third base easily. It's just those types of things. It's almost like they're pressing, trying to do too much. They know that the injuries are there, and they're trying to overcompensate and do more than they need to. And it's just plays like that all weekend long that really cost the Braves. And, you know, it was just quite frustrating. Like I said, the lack lack of offense – Terrible umpiring behind the plate. I mean, it was awful all series long, and I'm not blaming that on the Braves losing, but it was bad. Um, you know, failing to come through with the plate in the big spot. Bases loaded, no outs on Saturday, the middle of your order, and you can't score a run? Give me a break. That is terrible. That is just terrible. And you knew the game was over as soon as that happened, and the, the Blue Jays come back the next inning or in the bottom half of that inning, and they score and take the lead. You just knew it was over right then. Bullpen not stepping up when it needs to. I mean, hopefully this is the worst series we see the Braves play all year. It's hard for me to imagine them playing a worse series than what they did in Toronto. I do want to end it on a good note here. A lot of bad, but Strider was fantastic. 12 strikeouts. Elder put together another solid start. Acuna, a good weekend as well. Four hits, two walks, a home run, and two stolen bases. Riley had three hits and two walks in his final two games. So, again, hopefully another Small indication of him breaking out. And Azuna remains a productive hitter at the plate. He had a great at bat on Saturday. He worked the count full and then hit a two-run homer to get the scoring started on Saturday. So there were some positives in the series. You know, a couple of individual performances that I thought were good. But overall, just a really bad weekend for the Braves. So we're going to turn the page on that one. The Braves will be up in Texas or be down in Texas next trying to get things going against another really good team. But I do want to focus on the minor league segment right now as we do our minors Monday update where hopefully there will be some more good news down on the farm. We'll discuss that here next. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to My Garage. Look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. 
And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts and the right fit and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. The Braves and the Rangers play on Monday night at 8.05 p.m. Eastern. A schedule doesn't let up for the Braves as they face the top team in the AL West. Catch every pitch of the Braves' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Braves. It's our Miners Monday segment. I'm going to take you through the top prospects in the Braves system, tell you how they did, and then give you the top performers from each league, as we do every Monday here on Locked on Braves. Jared Schuster, who I think is going to be in line to start possibly Tuesday's game. Again, I think you got to get rid of these bullpen games. I think it's really putting too much stress on the bullpen. Put some of these young guys up here, or you know, veteran guys in Michael Soroka, who is also still very young, but... Give some of these guys an opportunity and stop stress overstressing your bullpen and overstressing Brian Snicker with how to manage that bullpen because he's worried about a bullpen game. Let some of these guys pitch. And Jared Schuster, five and two thirds innings, seven hits, one walk, four earned, six strikeouts this past week. Again, I think he's going to get an opportunity to start uh, early this week in that Rangers series. Owen Murphy, two innings, two hits, two walks, two earned, three strikeouts, still ramping him up. Slowly, J.R. Ritchie was placed on the seven-day injured list this past week. Uh, so he'll be out for a little bit of time. Didn't really get any specific details on that injury. Hopefully it's nothing concerning there. One of the highlights of the week down on the farm, A.J. smith Shaver got to make his first full start in AA. It's his last start was cut short due to rain, and he was great. Five innings, three hits, one walk, no earn, seven strikeouts. Really all the pitchers at Mississippi were outstanding this past week. We'll talk more about that here in a second. But good to see A.J. smith Shaver out to a great start at AA. I've seen some tweets. I think they're joking, talking about calling up A.J. smith Shaver. That is not going to happen anytime soon, but uh, I'm glad to see all the hype on him. He deserves it. He is a, a great pitcher. Again, he was the top of my list of Braves prospects this coming into the season. He has not disappointed so far. Braden Shoemake. Hasn't played in a game in over a week and doesn't have a hit at any level in the month of May and just 11 at bats. But I need this guy to get back down to AAA. I need him playing every day. I need him getting opportunities. I mean, we're talking over a week now that the guy hasn't played a game of baseball. That it cannot be good for a guy who's still trying to develop and put things together. So hopefully Braves will make a move here soon and get Braden Shoemake down to AAA so he can start playing every day. Spencer Schwellenbach, three innings, five hits, two walks, no earn somehow. He gave up five hits and two walks in three innings, but no earn runs allowed, three strikeouts for Spencer Schwellenbach. Uh, Ambioris Tavares, six for 27 this past week, uh, one double, one walk, 12 strikeouts. He had one game, he went 0 for 5 with five strikeouts. So I know last week we talked about some adjustments he made and starting to help him impact the ball a little bit more, but still really struggling with the strikeouts. Dylan Dodd made two starts this past week. Not great in either one of them. Three and a third, eight hits, one walk, seven earned, three strikeouts in his first start. And then on Sunday, five innings, eight hits, one walk, five earned, gave up two home runs, did strike out seven in his second start of the week, which came on Sunday. He would be eligible to come back this coming up weekend um, without having to put somebody on the IL if the Braves wanted to do that. I don't know that he's pitched to do that, but again, I think I think we're going to see Schuster early in the week, and then I think it's going to be between Dylan Dodd and Michael Soroka, who gets the other spot later in the week. Uh, Ignacio Alvarez, not a great week for him either. Two for 16 at the plate, just two walks and five strikeouts. Very uncharacteristic week for him. However, Rome did have three days off. Uh, they didn't play between May 6th and May 10th, so I'm going to chalk that up to why Ignacio Alvarez had such a a, a bad week and you know for his standards obviously but uh because of the the layoffs there because of the rain delays and all of that or the uh postponements uh michael soroka four innings four hits two walks three earns three strikeouts i watched a good bit of that start that he had you know a leadoff walk really good at bat by the hitter you know one thing i see about soroka right now is just not a lot of swings and misses not giving up a ton of hard contact. It's really a lot of singles that are just finding holes in that first inning. 
like I said, a good at bat by the hitter, fouled off some pitches, earned a walk, then a ball that was, you know, found a hole on the infield, was able to get through, and then Keston here took him opposite field for a home run in the first inning, and it was a 30-plus pitch first inning. He's down three to nothing, but then really settled in after that and, again, worked through the next three innings, uh, still kind of keeping his pitch count down. So I think he was somewhere in the 70s in pitch count, probably could have gone another inning. So we'll see what they do with Soroka again. I think he could come in to pitch this coming up weekend if they wanted him to or in that uh, next series after this this coming up weekend, I think there's an opportunity for Soroka to get uh, a chance and get a call up again. I think it's between he and Dodd. I think Schuster's going to get one of those spots. I think he's pitching the best right now. Uh, and then I think it's going to be between Dodd and Soroka. I- I'm kind of leaning towards Soroka again, not just I want to see the guy finish the comeback, but you know, I-, I think he could benefit. And I know this is not you know hypocritical to say after what I just talked about, but I think he could benefit from the Braves' defense behind him. I know they weren't great over the weekend and have been kind of up and down so far this year, but you know he's just been getting singled to death down at AAA. Maybe the Braves' defense can prevent some of that, but I just want to see him back. I want to see him complete that comeback. Uh, down in Gwinnett, Von Grissom, he went down, and the guy just started hitting again like, he's capable of the the power seven for 23 this past week, three doubles, a home run, two walks, six strikeouts, a stolen base and seven runs scored. So again, I don't worry about the bat, but it's good to see him go down there and have some impact. He you know wasn't showing that at the big league level for whatever reason. So hopefully that's kind of calmed him down a little bit. It's good to see him go down and not really, you know, be fr- sad or frustrated. He just went back down and has gone back to work and he's looked great at the plate. Yomer Sanchez, 6-for-16, a double, three walks, and four strikeouts. Another option on the infield if you wanted to call somebody up to replace Braden Shoemake so you could send him down. You'd have to obviously make room on the 40-man, but um, you know he's he had a good week as well, and see, he's had a pretty good season for AAA. Not too much to write home about on the pitching side of things we're going to this past week. So we'll move on to Mississippi. Kay Bunnell had a big day on Sunday, four hits, including a home run. This is a guy I watched him in – when they came to Birmingham last year and he crushed the baseball. Now he strikes out a ton, but when he hits the baseball, it is loud. He makes a lot of hard contact and he had a big day on Sunday. Kel Conley also had five hits in five games on the week with three walks, three stolen bases and seven runs scored the entire pitching staff on Mississippi this past week in five games, just four earned runs allowed eight runs total for them unearned so got to work on some defense there at mississippi but the pitching staff was excellent domingo robles six innings four hits two walks no earned 11 strikeouts on the season robles has a 3-1-2 era 47 strikeouts and 34 and two-thirds innings this is where i have to stop for a moment and remind listeners that they are experimenting with a tacky baseball at the double a level that's really throwing things off and for some pitchers I think it's been a big benefit because um, you obviously get better feel on the on the baseball. You can get better spin rates. So you got to take some of these pitching numbers at the double A level with a grain of salt. But uh, they all pitched great this past week. Alan Rangel, five innings, four hits, two walks, one earned, ten strikeouts. Scott Blewett, six innings, three hits, two walks, one earned, eight strikeouts. And Victor Vodnik was good out of the bullpen as well. Three innings, no hits, one walk, no earned, three strikeouts, and two save so good to see that for victor vodnik down at rome my guy kevin kilpatrick six for 19 this past week had a home run three walks six strikeouts two stolen bases five runs scored a ray adrianza five for 14 at rome we'll see if he comes back sometime this week drake baldwin three for 11 one double four walks and a strikeout hunter riggins on the mound five innings no hits no walks no earned seven strikeouts so good start for him at rome and Tyler Owens, three innings, no hits, no walks, no earn, and four strikeouts. And I got to mention Rob Griswold as well because another great name that the Braves have in the system. Two and a third innings, no hits, no walks, no earned, three strikeouts, and two saves for Rome. And then finally for Augusta, David McCabe, a monster week. He may be in line for player of the week down there for Augusta. 11 for 25, two doubles, a triple, a home run, three walks, and six strikeouts. Good to see him get going with that big bat we know that he has been off to a little bit of a slow start at the professional level but you know college hitter had a you know big bat coming out of 
of Charlotte. Want to see him get going. If he can kind of figure it out, I think you know he can move quickly, and, and we can see him up in Rome soon if there's a spot for him. But good to see him have a great week. Ethan Workinger, I feel like I talk about him every week now, and I see him just about every night doing something. Seven for 24 this past week, two doubles and a home run. And I mentioned last week, I hope Jair Casanova keeps it going because I just love saying his name. Six for 13 this past week, a double, two home runs, eight RBI, and he currently has an eight-game hit streak going on. Cedric D. Grand Prix, he again had another great outing. Five innings, two hits, one walk, no earned, five strikeouts. He has a 2.18 ERA on the year, 0.87 whip, 20 and two-thirds innings, just 13 hits allowed, five walks, and 27 strikeouts. 21 years old out of Chipola Junior College, which I know is a really good junior college. 13th round pick in 2022. He's been great to start the season. Might be uh, another sneaky find there for the Braves as he's off to a great year, a great start in Augusta. Seth Keller, who they continue to use out of the bullpen and kind of a long uh, relief role, but four innings, three hits, no walks, one earn, five strikeouts. Jason Franks, eighth round pick. From last year, had his best outing of the season. Two innings, no hits, no walks, no earn, and four strikeouts. So that's your Monday Miners update right there. Some good things going down on the farm for the Atlanta Braves while things are pretty bad over the weekend for the Atlanta Braves. But hopefully they turn that around soon, which they'll try to do on Monday night against the Texas Rangers. We'll discuss that next. All right, not a lot of news right now coming out on the Braves front. I think the biggest question is who starts Tuesday. Again, you cannot go with another bullpen game, so I think it's going to be Jared Schuster that gets the call on Tuesday. That would be his next scheduled start, so he would be in line for that. Um, and as far as Monday night, it's going to be Charlie Morton against Cody Bradford. Cody Bradford making his big league debut. He's 25 years old, left-handed pitcher, former sixth-round pick, for the Rangers, had a 5.01 ERA at AA last year, but he is off to a fantastic start in 2023. He has a 0.91 ERA and 0.86 whip at the AAA level in 39 and two-thirds innings with 37 strikeouts and 13 walks. He's gone at least five innings and every start so far this year. So the Rangers, after you know a long road trip, they are pushing their rotation back a day to give their guys some rest. So they're calling up Bradford to make his major league debut. The Braves have had really good success against lefties. So hopefully they can take advantage of that against a kid making his big league debut, be a little patient at the plate uh, and hopefully have a big day on a Monday night for Charlie Morton. Just keep doing what you've been doing. I mean, the veterans been really good this year. He's gone at least six innings and in four of his last five starts need that in this game to save the bullpen. It's a game where you really need Charlie Morton to go deep and save that bullpen. And hopefully the offense puts up a bunch of runs and you don't have to stress too much at the end of this one. But who knows with the way the Braves have been playing lately, more so than anything, I just need to see them play good baseball. It was so tough to watch. And again, I, I really didn't even watch a lot this weekend just because spending time with family, but just what I did watch and what I was hearing when I was listening to the game, it's just was not good baseball. It's not the type of baseball we're used to seeing the Braves play. So I want to see them get back to that now that they are in the States. Maybe it's just being above the border. Whatever it was, need to see them play some good baseball. Braves play the Rangers on Monday night at 8.05 p.m. Eastern. Again, Charlie Morton will try to help the Braves in a four-game losing streak. You can catch every pitch of the Braves' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search the word Braves. That will do it for this episode of Locked On Braves. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves. You can follow me at Shortstop Ball. have a lot of great content coming up for you this week as usual. We'll have our talk of the Tuesday segment on Tuesday, our stat of the day Wednesday on Wednesday. We'll take you around the league on Thursday, and then our mailbag episode on Friday, as well as everything the Braves got going on this week. Big series against the Rangers. See if they can get back on track. So make sure you subscribe to Lockdown Braves wherever you get your podcast. You enjoy the podcast, submit a review there. Let me know about it. As always, write a comment down in the YouTube section. Again, that will do it for this episode. We thank you so much for listening, and we will talk to you next time.